What's going on guys? This is The Design Penguin here with another tutorial to add to the first person shooter series. And this tutorial is going to be like nothing that the internet's ever seen. So the first thing we're going to be adding to our game is this beautiful environment provided by Profi Developers. So you'll find a link in the description for this. The next thing we're going to be doing is adding in this beautiful aiming system where when you aim in your character slows down as he turns around then when you aim out he comes back to normal speed again it looks so good and then the other thing we're going to be adding is dynamic bullet holes so what this will do is when you shoot an object it will make a bullet hole appear there and this is a very high resolution bullet hole but because of the way we've made it this will run at upwards of 100 frames per second on my computer, which is a really amazing frame per second, especially considering we're running an environment like this, as well as dynamic bullet holes. The third thing we're going to be adding is this beautiful movement system, where as you move, your player's head bobs up and down, up and down. It just adds that lovely, realistic feel to the game. So, are you guys excited? Because I am. Let's get into it. Hi guys, welcome back to the How to Make a First Person Shooter Tutorial Series. As you can see from the intro, we're going to be adding so much and I am really excited. So, despite what it looks like, this is actually the same project as I had in the intro. The only difference is, I imported the environment. The reason I didn't explain how to do this was that my screen recorder unfortunately crashed while I was doing it. Considering importing a giant environment like this, well that takes a lot of CPU space. Now to do this for the environment I'll be linking in the description, all you have to do is get your game, copy your player and paste it into the environment. Easy as that. So if you press play, you'll see that because of how well designed our script that we made was, we'll collide with objects and it works pretty nicely. As you can see, I have applied some pro only special effects to this. But that doesn't mean it doesn't look amazing already. So let's get straight into adding the gun and doing a whole lot more. So to add the gun we've got to double click on the main camera and this selects the camera. Now if you press the alt key on your keyboard and click you'll be able to pan around your camera. So now what we're going to do is hit game object and create empty. We can name this whatever we want but I'm going to name it weapons. Just hit enter and now you've got your game object called weapons. So now under this you want to import a model. Now this model can be found in the description and to import it all you have to do is click assets, import new asset and then navigate to where you got that asset. So once you've imported it make sure that the scale factor is 0.01. So once you've done that simply drag it onto weapons. So what we're going to do is click on the weapon then click the little triangle next to it, then on our gun model, as you can see, well, it's pretty big. If you consider this the size of our person, it's almost twice the size of it. So we're going to change this down to about, I don't know, 0.7 always seems to work well for this particular model. From a little bit of testing and because of my script, I found a position that just seems to work for me. And that is 0.0253. On the X, then you're going to go negative 0 0.71 0 0.73 and as you can see it's pretty close to the center of the screen create an empty game object and we'll name this spawn bullet now here's a handy little tip click on this little cubish looking thing and choose any color you like so this makes it a bit easier to locate when you're looking around for it. Position it right near the edge of the gun. And now just because of the way the system's set up, we're just gonna make it a little bit higher. And that's because we want it so that it's wherever you're looking down the side. So I'm gonna make it a little bit higher. That looks great. Make this a child of weapons. Now what we wanna do, wherever our main camera moves, our weapon moves. So what we're gonna do is in our scripts folder, edit our mouse look script. So now what we're gonna do, so we're gonna create a new variable called Bob speed. So this is going to be equal to how many times you want our player to bob. And so how we're going to be doing this bobbing using some trigonometry. Now I promise it's not going to be too hard. What we're going to use is sin x. So now as you'll notice, 
as our player moves in the x-axis it changes and it goes up and down so this is going to handle our forward movement and for our sideways movement we're going to use cos 2x so as you can see it's twice as fast because that's that's pretty realistic in my opinion now it isn't perfect but it seems to work so now that we've got that out of the way we can start or continue creating our variables this is going to be a float like most of my variables and this we can just set to one bar step counter and this is a float and we aren't going to assign a value to it just now bob amount x again a float i will make this equal to one semicolon and we'll just copy along this variable control c then control v we'll just change this one's name to bob amount y now from the name you can probably tell that this is the amount that our player is going to be bobbing up and down so now what we're going to do is create a variable called last position now this is an interesting type of variable it's one that you guys haven't experienced for example most of my other variables well in this script <laughs> all of them have been floats which means they can be decimals but now this last position is going to be something pretty interesting it's going to be a vector 3 that's with a capital v explaining what a vector 3 is is it's pretty hard but basically it's it's a position in 3d space called this height ratio so this is again a float it's going to be 0 0.9 and so this variable is equal to the position where we want the camera to be and so what we want the camera to do is to go between 0 0.9 and then 1.1 on the y-axis bar aiming true now this variable is based on the next few scripts we're going to be creating and as you can guess it's person's aiming so we'll just make this a float and we won't assign this a value actually you know what let's set it to one so next what we're going to create is a variable called camera default we'll make this a float and we'll make it equal to 60. so what this is equal to zoom is equal to that doesn't make perfect sense but basically to do the zooming in and that's by changing this field of view as you can see over here so our default is 60 but if we change this down to say 50 as you can see it zooms in so next we're going to create one called var target camera and this is a float and this is equal to 60 now this is set to 60 by default but this is what our computer is going to try to make it equal to so i'm going to wait create a variable called camera zoom this again is a float um, this is equal to one so now this v as you'll notice now i'm just going to create our last variable this is a float and it's equal to 0 0.1 semicolon there's all our variables out of the way so now what we're going to be doing is creating a new function now a function this function is called function awake last position and now this is equal to transform dot parent right dot position so this is saying that our variable called last position which was a float is equal to the parent of this object's position so the parent of the main camera is the player so when the player was created then that variable last position is equal to the player's position at that so now in our function update we're going to be adding in a few aiming things so the first of that is an if statement which basically says aiming true is equal to one so whenever that variable is equal to one execute everything in between these two little curly brackets french brackets so the code we wanted to execute if the aiming is true is that camera zoom is equal to now what did i say about using smooth damp mathf.smoothdamp 
Now, the reason I'm not just setting the camera um, zoom equal to 60 is because we want it to have this really nice boom, where you sort of like, when you press it, it's not instant, it's not choppy. We want it so that it like goes in, not too, not too slowly, but we just want it to go in. We don't want it to be instant. So now we're gonna go mathf.smoothdamp. Now what we do is we have our camera zoom variable, and then we always have one here, basically meaning true. Then as usual, my camera zoom V, you know how I like to create the velocity variable as well. And now the next one is just how fast we want that to be. So camera zoom speed. So all these three variables here, the only reason I've created them is just for this smooth damp function. Now what we're gonna do is go else. So this is basically, if this is not true, or if whatever that, whatever's in there does not happen, then execute this code. And so that's camera zoom. It's the exact same code, except, oops, got to copy it. Select it, control C, control V. Boom, change this number to zero. Now what we're gonna write is camera dot field of view. And so what this is, it is, as you can see, this is actually a variable. Uh, and so now what we're doing is we're accessing that variable. So the field of view variable, we want this to be equal to mathf.lerp. Um, and then we, inside these parameters, we want it to be target camera, camera default, and camera zoom. So now that we've done that, we want to just go if, another if statement, now that we're used to them, dot get component and now what we want it to do is get the component movement so this is the name of our script so basically what it's doing is it's getting the script movement and then it's going dot grounded so we could write equals true but we can actually just leave it at dot grounded automatically if the if statement's true you don't have to put a condition so so that's basically saying if the variable on the parent, which is the player, in the movement script that we created, so the variable called grounded is true, then execute this code. And so this code is step counter plus equals. So basically step counter plus equals is, say we said step counter plus equals one, that's the same as saying step counter equals step counter plus one so it's just a quicker way of writing that basically so plus equals now here comes our vector three vector three Ooh, vector three Ooh, oops. three dot distance last position remember we did that up at the top comma transform dot parent dot position now we're just going to multiply this by whatever our bob speed is equal to transform dot local position dot x is so on the x-axis is equal to math f dot sin so there comes our little bit of trigonometry step counter then we'll just multiply this by bob amount x semicolon now we're not actually just going to copy and paste this next line and change it to y's it's sort of different sure we can copy and paste this okay we'll actually do that to save time we'll make this equal to mathf.sin sorry so now in this sin we'll go step counter times two do is we'll multiply that bob amount y then we times that by minus one and we're just doing that because we need it to be a negative number now what we're gonna do is add on transform dot parent here comes our player again whenever we say transform dot parent we're referring to the parent well i mean the player 
then we'll go local scale dot y times this by our height ratio now we'll minus and we'll just copy this over except instead of timesing it by the height ratio we just go local scale dot y divided by two so we'll just add a semicolon control s just in case my computer crashes again we don't want that so now we're just going to say last position equals transform dot parent dot position so basically every single frame first it's gonna make the last position equal to something because it has to equal something and then every single time it just runs through it and it changes its last position there's a little issue doubled up on my arm so yeah we've only got one more and that seems pretty easy to fix dumb mistake make sure to always end everything in a semicolon boom all our arrows are gone so now what are we going to do well we're going to work on our movement script all we're going to be doing with this movement script nothing as much as we were doing with the other one is fixing a little issue and that is that um, you can also, you can sort of get stuck to walls, um, if that sounds right, yeah, obviously we need to fix that, so, first thing, um, we gotta change this if statement to just, if grounded, and we don't need to worry about this, this can also be if grounded, killing two birds with one stone there, um, but now we have to do a little bit, to fix this up and that would be change this to rigid body dot add relative force because basically all we're saying is if they press the jump button and they're grounded then just add a bit of force well the problem is if you're right next to an object that doesn't really work so what we're going to do rigid body dot add add relative force there we go uh, now we're going to go input dot <laughs> can't spell dot get axis now this is going to be the horizontal axis so you've got to put on a little quotation marks and we're going to multiply this by player acceleration and then what we're going to do is do something called multiply it by time dot delta time now the reason we do this is because if you're running a computer at 10,000 frames per second, your player is going to jump at a different height to if you have one that's running it at 2 frames per second. And basically if you times it by time dot delta time, it makes it so that it doesn't matter if you've got a super fast computer or a super slow computer, well, it's not going to change the height of your jump. And this is actually a legitimate issue because if any of you have heard of the game Super Meat Boy, which I have and I love it, great game. But one thing I noticed when I got my new computer, which is much more powerful, is everything's like three times as fast. And well, that's a little issue and they don't have unity, so they can't just multiply it by time dot delta time. So we're lucky. So now I'm just going to write else, and now in this else statement we're going to basically copy this along, paste it in there, and change it to times this by time dot delta time, and jump control, and then time dot delta time, and again here, times jump, jump control, and time dot delta time so all we have to do is add in that little times jump control and well we have to add in one more little thing before we can call this script script done uh, we'll just write if input put dot get button down and this button is jump so that's the space bar 
And we're grounded. Not grounded as in allowed to stay home. Um, you know the variable grounded. Then we want it to just simply do the old rigid body dot add force. I just want this to be simply 0, 0, 0. No, I'm joking. This middle one has to be jump speed. So that's all we have to do for that script. And that's looking great. So we can hit Control S. Now jump back into Unity. And we're going to create a script called Guns. So just for the sake of time, I'm going to try to fly through these variables. So these are camera object, target X rotation, target Y rotation, then target X rotation V and target Y rotation V. Then the rotate speed, then hold Y, X and Z, then hold down, then aim speed, then hold down V, then aiming is true, then zoom angle, then fire rate, then wait till fire, then bullet, and then spawn bullet. So all of these are going to be floats except for camera object and bullet and spawn bullet. So now I can just our function start. We're gonna start off straight with if statements. So in this if statement, we're gonna write input dot get button down. Got button, no, just get button. Fire one, this is a def, fire one's a default variable. Make sure to put it in quotation marks. Now, what do we want it to do? Well, we want it to call another if statement so in this if statement we want the condition to be our variable called wait till fire i think till fire is less than or equal to zero then we want it to call who would have guessed another if statement yeah a lot of if statements <laughs> this is bullet so if bullet's true then we want it to actually do something and that's instantiate the bullet. So instantiate basically means create it. Unfortunately, Mono Develop doesn't give you very good um, suggestions. I don't know what they're called. Spawn bullet dot transform dot position. Not a local position this time. Because we always want the bullets to be going in a straight line. That will go spawn bullet spawn bullet dot trans transform dot rotation add a semicolon at the end and right before we end with this we're going to write wait till fire equals one so basically whenever the variable wait till fire is less than or equal to zero uh, basically create the bullet and once it's created the bullet make sure wait till fire is equal to one our variable wait till fire is going to be going down constantly uh, and we want it to be a little bit of a gap between when we fire the bullet and when we can fire again just for a bit of realism so now that we've got that, that out of the way we need to make our wait till fire variable change so wait till fire minus equals time dot delta time so so just making sure that it's frame rate independent which means that it's still going to change depending on your frame rate. So now what we're going to write is camera object. I believe I created a variable for that. Dot get component. Um, yep, get component. So now basically we're accessing the script here. Um, it's called mouse look target camera. Basically we're accessing this variable. So if I can find it. Um, there we go, we're accessing that variable. So we've got that dot target camera is equal to our zoom angle variable. Okay, so now we're going to do if statement heaven and an else statement here. Okay, so our condition for our original if statement is going to be input dot get button button um, fire to hold down equals math f dot smooth damp you see i love my smooth damps hold down comma zero comma hold down v 
So you may be noticing a small pattern um, in these smooth damps that I'm using. See, I use them a lot, and you'll notice here what I'm doing is I'm getting my variable, then 0 or 1, then my variable v, and then the speed I want it to be at. That's sort of just like the order I like to use. Um, it's just a technique that I've used over the years, and it works pretty well. So you guys are using it right now, hopefully, if you're following along, or you're just watching out of fun, because I guess you do that. Because that's how entertaining my voice is. So aiming true. Uh, is true bro <laughs> is equal to aiming is true see what I said about having two variables that have to have different names okay so now in our else statement if we want it to say we'll just do the exact same thing so we'll just copy it for sake of time for the sake of time and we'll change this to one dot aiming true equals one Okay, so now we're going to write transform dot position uh, is equal to is equal to our camera object um, dot dot transform dot position. Now we just add on. There you go. Get ready. Quaternion dot Eula. Apparently, I've been pronouncing Eula, Eula wrong. Thanks for pointing that out. I've got to stop embarrassing myself. So I'll target Y rotation, comma zero. We'll multiply this by vector three. Now, what are these vector three's properties? Well, they're going to be hold down times hold X. There we go, hold x, comma, you know, just for the sake of time. Let's do this. And we're just going to change this to x, y, z. That's the order all functions use. So you're always going to go x, y, z. So now what we're going to say is target x rotation is equal to, here we go with our smooth damps dot see see if you can notice the pattern in this uh, compared to the other smooth damps I've been using target X rotation comma camera object camera object dot get component and now we wanted to get our mouse look what variable we do we want it to get from the mouse look script we want it to get X rotation comma target x rotation v comma rotate speed so we're actually just going to do this all the way again and this time we're going to change it all to y's so let's go ahead and do that turns out in the first tutorial i actually missed out one of these i was going through and changing them all to y's and i missed one uh, because it was only a smoothing thing it didn't have a big effect on the a game and it wasn't noticeable but yeah i missed one i think i put a little annotation over the top to say that i had missed one just fix that that's not supposed to happen but yeah rotation is equal to quaternion dot eula i can pronounce it now i think um <laughs> Target X rotation, comma, target Y rotation, rotation, comma, zero. Click Control S. Let's check our console for millions of errors. Only one, that's pretty good. So it's on this line, and all we have to do is add a little semicolon. There we are. By the way, some of you have spelled instantiate wrong. What did I say? Some of you have been asking, what recording software do I use? Um, well, to answer your question, I use Camstasia Studio 8. Now you go ahead and look that up and you'll notice well, that costs money. I'm 
not going to pay money. Well, me neither. I don't pay money for things. Um, not necessarily going to be providing a link for where to download it because I don't want to get in trouble with the police. But I'm just saying, Google's your friend, okay? It's pretty easy to get stuff for, for free with Google. I'm going to press Control S. Don't think so. There we go. That's how you spell it. Control S. Yes. Okay, so now we're almost done. We're just going to be creating one more JavaScript. Don't worry, this is going to be tiny compared to the rest of them. So this is just going to be called bullet. First of all, you can delete this function start. And we're going to be creating only three variables. So, so we're going to create three variables. The first is max distance. The second will be hit wall. And the third will be in front. So max distance is a float as well as in front being a float. And hit wall is a game object. Now when you write game object, make sure to use a capital G and a capital O. So our max distance variable will be to equal to any large number that you want. I'm going to use a thousand. Uh, and the in front variable will be any small number. So 0.001 is what I'll be using. So when I originally recorded me creating this script, I took ages to do the simplest of things. So what I'm going to do now is do it as quickly as possible. Inside our function update, we're going to create a variable called hit. That's with a lowercase h. And then we're going to create our colon and then write raycast hit, making sure to use a capital R and a capital H. Then we're just going to place a semicolon. Now we're going to create an if statement. And this if statement's condition will be physics.raycast now in our parentheses we'll write transform.position comma transform.forward comma hit make sure to use a lowercase h comma max distance now we'll close up both our parentheses so now in our if statement we're going to write if hit.transform.tag equals level and so use a capital l for level make sure to put that in quotes so now what we want it to do once this condition is met well we want it to instantiate open parentheses hit wall comma hit dot point plus open parenthesis hit dot normal times in front close parenthesis comma quaternion dot look rotation open parenthesis hit dot normal close both our parentheses and put a semicolon now after all those if statements just create this destroy with a capital D now in the parentheses just write game object and well we're done with that script what we're going to do is create a folder called prefabs. So now that we've created all our scripts, now we need to make them work in conjunction with everything we've made uh, in the previous episodes. So to do that, what we're going to do is first um, add our gun script to our weapons object. So click on add component, scripts, uh, and guns. So now our camera object will just drag in from here. So we're going to change some of these variables. For example, rotate speed should be 0.1. And uh, not only that, but the most important variables, these hold x, y, and z variables, should be as follows. Hold x should be 0.25. So now our hold y variable should be negative 0.1. Uh, and then our hold z variable should be like negative 0.04 approximately okay so now hold down should be one now our aim speed should be about 0.1 and then our hold down v again zero aiming is true should be 0.3 and our zoom angle has to be 50. now our fire rate can be up to you I'm going to choose like 10 to 15, so I'll choose 15, uh, and wait till fire will leave as 0. So now that we've got that, we need to get this bullet and spawn bullet object. So what we're going to do is create an empty game object and then another one. And right, so we're going to name them accordingly. So this can be spawn bullet. Uh, and now the other will be our bullet. So this one will write bullet. So now under this bullet object, we're going to have to change all of these positions to zero just because we're going to be turning them into prefabs. So just make sure to do that. I've had a whole lot of annoying errors with that. Uh, and so what we're going to do is change these all to zero. And now we're going to create a game object, create other plane. Uh, and 
this is going to have scale of 0 0.02 times 0 0.02 times 0. Oops, 0 0.02. Now we're going to delete the mesh collider on this. And we're going to name this decal or image or whatever you want. So we're going to attach a material to this. So that material can be found at the link in the description, which will lead you to this, the concrete hole. And so once you've got that, in your textures folder, drag in the concrete hole.png and you'll notice if you're like me, sometimes it works, but for me it just turns out black. So the way to fix that is to change this to GUI editor slash legacy and then hit apply. So now we can see the image, it's like quite a crisp, nice bullet hole. So now in our materials, we're going to right click, create a new material and we're going to uh, leave, name this for example decal uh, and all we're going to do is just apply that texture that we got by on this left hand side clicking on textures and dragging it in and we're going to change this one's shader to transparent and then diffuse so this makes it support PNG files that have transparency because we don't want to be seeing white outlines for our shape so now in our decal object, oops, we've got to rotate it on the X to 90 uh, and change its position to 000. zero, zero. Uh, and our spawn bullet, that should actually be at the position of the end of the gun. So what I'm going to do is make it a child of weapons and change it to 000, zero, zero so that it's approximately where we want it and change its icon to the green one. Now. I'm going to rotate around it and try position it as best as I can so that it's at the edge of the gun. Now one thing you'll notice here is I'm not putting it directly at the edge of the gun like here. And that's because when our player looks, he actually looks through this scope. And so we want the bullet to fire from about a, where that scope lines up. So now that we've got that spawn bullet object, we'll drag all of these into the prefabs folder so spawn bullet and make sure that um, decals are uh, child of bullet by dragging it under and now bullet so hopefully the decal has to have the um, material that we created on it so what we're going to do is click on our prefabs folder and click on decal and now in this left hand bar so we don't lose all the stuff in our inspector we're going to click on our materials folder and then drag in decal just near the bottom so now as you'll notice in our prefabs folder our bullet object has this um, little image on it so we're going to rename this to bullet hole because that's more appropriate what it appropriately what it's equal to so we're going to click on our weapons object and drag in the spawn bullet so now we've got to create our bullet object so we're going to click game object create empty and name this bullet okay set this uh, object's position to zero on every axis by just hitting tab to make it a bit quicker uh, and now with this bullet object we're going to click add component scripts and now our bullet script uh, and now our hit wall will be equal to this um, bullet hole prefab that we created now we're going to make this bullet into a prefab again so now, just, just to be sure, make sure all of these objects have a position of 000, zero, zero except for the spawn bullet. Uh, and so now, if we go into our weapons object, we can drag in bullet and hit control S and hope that this works. Okay, so as you can see, we're moving a bit slowly. So what we can always do is change this max speed up to something like 10, not 310, oops, that might be a bit crazy. Yep, and maybe change our player acceleration to 3000. Okay, that's good. So now we can aim in and see how it has this nice smooth animation sort of thing. And if we look in our... Um, scene view when we click on the camera object 
we'll notice that as we zoom in, it gets a bit smaller. If you look in this field of view variable here, so that's working nicely, it's zooming in a bit. And now for the grand finale, we need to test if bullets holes are working. So they're working nicely. So now if you're testing this out on yours, you may be encountering one problem and that's that when you fire the bullet holes are not appearing. And so the way to fix this is to click on an object that's in your scene that you've designed. So I'm going to click on this wall. And as you can see, this wall has two objects. It has a child that's the actual wall object and then it's got the one with the collider on it. So make sure you select the object with the collider on it. So this is the one that has the green box around it. So this basically shows us um, like a rough estimation of where that object is. So what you're going to have to do is change its tag to level. And if you haven't got that, just click add tag and write level. So what I've gone and done is for the important objects, I've changed them to level. Uh, and once I finish up this game, I'm going to change everything to be tagged with level. But for now, I've only tagged a few of them. So if you've tagged those objects now, hopefully that should be working for you. But that's just in case you're encountering some issues, which very commonly happens. Uh, and so if you are encountering issues other than these, uh, be feel free to just leave a comment in the description of your issues that you're encountering. And I'll try to get back to you like I always do. Um, and yeah, thanks for watching this tutorial, guys. Hope you enjoyed it as much as I did making it. And so what we're going to be doing in the third episode is maybe adding in a few things that commenters have asked for, which I've been loving getting all these comments. And we'll also be optimizing this because as you can see, it works fine. And then when I shoot a bullet, it creates quite a lot of lag. So we're going to be going through and optimizing that. Maybe making a system where after a minute or 30 seconds, the bullets delete. I can't wait to do that. And thanks for watching.